Well, I came today to talk to you about the church, about Pathway Church, and I guess the state of the church, and I just want to say right up front, the state of the church is good because God is good. And if that's all I said and I walked off the stage, that's all we need to know today. He is faithful. His mercy endures for all generations. You know, we should never think that we somehow have the corner on the market on God's blessing and on his goodness. God's presence can be anywhere. What we want to do is we want to cooperate with his work in us. And so that's what I've come to, to celebrate. And then I've also come to pour gas on that fire today. So I'll say it one more time. The state of the church is good because God is good. Say that with me. God is good. Amen. Now, Psalm 100 verse 5, Scripture says, For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And I just want to make a mention that has nothing to do with the organization of the church, has everything to do with the organism of the church, the life of the church, and the reality of Jesus. When we woke up this morning and we had breath in our lungs, the Lord was good. When we showed up at this place and we shook hands with people that we love and people who love us and Maybe we even showed up and saw some people that we might be crossways with and we see that God has some reconciliation work. The fact that we are in relationship is proof that the Lord is good. The Lord is good today. He was good when he put food on our tables and food in our bellies. Can I get an amen? Let's praise the Lord for Waffle House. <laughs> put that out there. Every day that you spend at Waffle House is a good day. So... Thankful for that. Thankful for clothes on our backs. Anybody glad for the blessing, the prosperity of the Lord? Just for a moment, I mean, just stop and think about this just for a second, just for a second. We are the wealthiest people on the planet. And I know that there is need in this church. There is need. As long as there are people, there's going to be need. But you need to understand that if you arrived at this place driving a vehicle powered by an internal combustion engine, we are among the top 5% of the wealthiest people on the planet. And if our whole household makes over $15,000 a year, we are among the wealthiest, percent, uh, wealthiest people uh, on the planet. We are incredibly blessed. I'm so thankful for how blessed that we are today. You know, the Lord was good when he saved us, when he cleaned us up. How many of you say, I'm not who I used to be? <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Amen. And that's the rear view mirror. How many of you say, I'm also not who I'm going to be? And the Lord is good in that transformation and that transformative work. He saved us. He cleaned us up. He opened our eyes. He's helping us. He's transforming, transforming our, our minds so that we think the way that Jesus thinks. That's half the battle right there is just to see the world like Jesus does. And I knew that the Lord was good when he gave us a future and a hope. How many of you know you have a future? You have a hope. God has a destiny and a purpose and a plan for your life. We're not just floating around on whatever wave that takes us, but we have a destination and we are pressing towards the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And we're moving. Sometimes it may feel like you get pulled back a little bit, but that's okay. Just keep plugging on. Keep moving forward. Don't stop. Get it. Get it. Come on. Stay with it. Let's hang in there. Let's go. Let's not quit. God is working in us. Amen. The Lord's good. He's good. And you know, we don't talk a lot about heaven much anymore, but can we stop and talk about heaven for just a second? Is that okay? Because I want to go there I'm not trying to escape this place. I love earth. I love living. I am, I'm a liver. I li not a liver like a kidney, but I live. <laughs> I live. I love living. I want to take it in. I want to, I'm not asking for the Lord to bail me out of this place. There's some, look at these incredible people. We get to do life with one another. We're blessed. But I am looking forward to heaven. I got some people there I want to see. I'm looking forward to seeing Jesus. I got some questions for him. And you know what I'm going to do when I get to heaven? I've already thought about this for a long time. I started preaching when I was young, when I was really young. And so maybe this view of heaven is a little bit influenced by that. But I've already thought that when I get to heaven, the, the roads are paved with gold. I'm going to go show up with the fuzziest socks I can get, and I'm going to slide 
on those streets of gold. And you know what? I'm a fish because they say that's a river of life. There's a lot of fish. That's my kind of fish. And I like to do catching, not fishing. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the fact that there'll be no more pain. All the tears will be wiped away from our eye. There'll be no more suffering. I've seen some friends this week that are in pain. And I am so thankful to the Lord that our bodies are going to be renewed. Our Man, my knee is going to work like it's supposed to. I'm going to be able to run like I was when I was 19, 20 years old. I stutter stepped one time and it changed the game for me. I heard my ACL go like rubber bands, just let go. All that stuff's going to be fixed. You know that back, when you take a deep breath and you feel it, you're like, oh man. Some of you came in on walkers and some of you came in with all kinds of ointments and you patched together. And you're like 30. You just have lived hard. <laughs> you know what? Heaven, God's going to fix some stuff. I'm looking forward to that. God's good because of heaven. You know what? I'm looking forward to seeing my, my nana and papa, Robert and Tula Johnson. I'm looking forward to seeing my grandma and grandpa, WJ and Lacey Roberts. I'm looking forward to seeing them. Really looking forward to that. I shared this in the, in the first service today. The last words I heard my grandfather say to me, and I knew they were his last words. I was walking out of his house. He is always so strong. He was strong. I shot my first gun with him. I caught my first fish with him. We did fun stuff together. I'm, I was five years old, and he was asking me if I was flirting with girls. I was like, I was so embarrassed. You know, he's always messing with me, teaching me how to do stuff. But as a young minister, I was leaving his house one time, and he wasn't strong like he was. He was so frail. And he reached up as I was walking out the door. I had already said my last goodbyes, and I'm turning, and I already have tears welling up in my eyes because I just knew the pace of my life, and I didn't think I was going to be able to get back to North Carolina to see him to say goodbye. And as I turned for the door, he reached up and grabbed me by the arm. And, you know, I thought he was frail, but, man, he left, man, he left a mark on my arm. He wasn't letting me go. And from one preacher to another young, from an old preacher to a young preacher, from an old bull to a young bull, an old lion to a young lion cub, he said, son, feed my sheep. He said, don't fleece them. Don't hurt them. Feed my sheep. I can't wait to see W.J. Roberts. I cannot wait. I get to see my cousin Jamie, who was killed when he was two years old can't wait to see him. I've got friends. I've got people. I've got heroes that have already gone there. I'm looking for How many of you are looking forward to heaven? I'm looking forward to that place. The Lord is good. And we're going to be worshipers too. Man, we're get, I'll tell you what. <laughs> we're going to be preaching in heaven too. We're going to be declaring the greatness of Jesus. We're going to take, we'll take all of our crowns. We'll throw them at his feet. Man, God is good because he's given us a place and a family and a future like this. You know, in heaven, we're going to see people that we know and we're going to see people that we don't know. You know, the Lord is so good. He's going to allow you to meet people that you were instrumental in leading to Jesus. You didn't even know it. Maybe because you were serving. Maybe what you were doing at your business. Maybe because you just interacted with someone at the right moment and the right place. You were faithful to the Holy Spirit. A door was open and you stepped in it. Maybe you were nervous. Maybe you were anxious. Maybe it was easy for you. Maybe you're changing diapers over in, in kids' church. I don't know. Maybe you're running a camera. Maybe you're working up in tech. I mean, can we just bless the tech team? I mean, these guys are amazing for the way they serve. It may even be today because of their work, someone that's watching this message would even come to know Jesus. I just imagine in heaven, somebody's going to come up to you and say, thank you for what you did. You were the one that opened the door for me to come to know Jesus. Let me tell you, God is good. And the church is good because, because God is good. And so let me just say it one more time. The Lord is good, and that's why the church is good. Psalm 100, verse 1. I'm going to read this whole passage here. Shout with joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Why do you guys get like you do? I can't help it because we got full, we're full of joy. 
For if it makes you a little uncomfortable, I'm sorry, I can't help it. I'll try to be on better behavior next time. But I can't help it because it's like fire shut up in our bones. The Lord's good, man. He's good. So, so shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is good. He made us. And we are his. Let me just tell you, sidebar, you did not choose God. He chose you. Why is the church good? Because God's the one that picked this team, man. He's the one that chose us. You might have been the last one picked for kickball, but when God picked you, he knew exactly what he was doing. He brought you in. He loved on you when you were unlovable. Some of you were sorry, no good jokers on your very best day. The rest of you were still sorry, no good jokers. You just presented a little bit better. God took us and he worked us. He's shaping us. He's changing us. You know what? The church is good because God is reforming and transforming and shaping and regenerating. And one day we're going to be face to face and we're going to know in full instead of in part, instead of seeing through a glass darkly, we will see Jesus face to face. It's going to be clear. The church is good because God is good. He made us and we're his. We are his people. The sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. Let me say this to people who think that the church is in trouble because, you know, the next generation, they're just a mess. Let me tell you, you were a mess. You were a mess. It's not about us. It's about him. He is faithful from generation to generation. So stop overestimating yourself and start estimating God properly. He is at work here and he has a good, good plan. So we're thankful to him. The Lord is good. Would you just one more time stop and let the Lord know how thankful we are for him being good to us. Let's bless him today. The church is good because the Lord is good. The church is good because, this, because the church is the body of Christ. The church is good because the church belongs to Jesus. Let me tell you, this church doesn't belong to any person except the person, Jesus Christ, except the man, Jesus. He's our good shepherd. He's our good pastor. I want to be a good pastor. Well, he's the good shepherd. I'm just an under shepherd. I'm just a sheepdog. I might bark at you from time to time and try and get you in line. Look, some of you need to be gotten into line a little bit, right? Have all of us, all of us, when the Lord kind of leans into us, let's just get, oh, get back in line, get this thing worked out. Let me remind myself who I am. But this church doesn't belong to any man. It doesn't belong to a board. It doesn't belong to a denomination. It doesn't belong to a city. It doesn't belong to this property. The church isn't even this property. It's just a vehicle we use. It's just like a shoe. It's, a, it's beautiful. Don't you love it? But you know what? When we use it all up, when we get too big for it, whatever, we get rid of it, go get another one. This isn't the church. The church is his body, and we belong to him. We're the body of Christ, and Jesus is the head of the church. And then the church is good because the same Holy Spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead is living in us. So here's what's awesome. When the music is bad, the Holy Spirit is still good. When the preaching is bad, the Holy Spirit is still good. When the greeters out front are bad, the Holy Spirit is still good. Isn't it? When the weather is bad, the Holy Spirit is still good. The same Holy Spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead is resurrecting us. And he is redeeming us. And so that gives me courage. That gives me strength. Do I have all the answers? No, I don't. But I know the one that does. And I know the one that is at work in us. We ought to plan. We ought to strategize. We ought to hustle. We ought to do all the things that we ought to do. We ought to watch our stuff. But at the end of the day, unless... Jesus builds this house. We that labor, labor in vain to build it. This is the Lord's place. So the church is good for a lot of those reasons. Paul says 
In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19, he says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. Listen to this. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ. This is awesome. I want you to read and understand this. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. (laughs) This is a revelation we need to understand. Jesus had all of the responsibility and we get all of the privilege. And God gave, the Father gave everything to the Son and the Son works it out for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. So we are made complete in an almighty, all-powerful Christ. And I know there are powerful things in the world. You're facing some very challenging circumstances from time to time. Any of you ever faced something that you just said, God, I don't even know how this is going to work. No, can we just be honest for a second? Can we just say, have you ever came to a place where you said, I see no path forward? I see no path. Lord, I don't even know what to do. Let me tell you, there are situations and there are people and there are difficulties and there are sicknesses that are powerful. And let me tell you, Satan is powerful, but Jesus is more powerful. There are mighty people, there are mighty men, but Jesus is mightier. He's more mightier. Can you say that? Whatever words you can put together to describe how mighty someone is, Jesus always has a greater than sign when you stack them up next to any situation that you face. Pathway, if we will walk in obedience to this Jesus that I'm talking about in the power of this Holy Spirit that we've all experienced, then we will experience fullness, life, joy, and strength. And everything that we have need of, God will take care of. Well, that's a big thing to say. I'm I'm not saying it in my own authority. I'm saying it in Jesus. And I'm saying it by experience. The fact that all of us are still standing is proof of the fact that God is still at work. He's working. If we'll trust the Holy Spirit, we'll walk in obedience to Christ. We'll be blessed. How many of you want to be blessed? The church will be blessed. How many of you want your church to be blessed? Your city will be blessed. How many of you want to see Mobile better off in 17 than in 16? So that's the good news. The good news, it's not on us. It's on, it's on Jesus. It's his church. Now, however, what we do with the church does matter. Our stewardship of the church. You know, God could, hey, we could, we could make God's presence not welcome here if we wanted to. We don't want to do that, do we? we want, look, we want to be hospitable to every single human being that walks in this community. But if there's anybody we want to make welcome, we want to make welcome the man Jesus Christ. So what we do matters, and what we've done, what the Lord has done through us has mattered. And I want to celebrate some of that really quickly here today. Some of the things that the Lord has uh, really blessed us with being a a part of in 16, I think we ought to just stop and, and be grateful to the Lord for that. This last year in Summer FX, we had over five 100 kids in attendance, 105 volunteers, and 115 people come to know Jesus Christ. I think we ought to give the Lord a hand clap for that. We had B1 youth camp, three churches, 128 campers, 45 staff members. We had the back to school blessing where we gave well over seven, 800 backpacks away, stuffed with all kinds of goodies and supplies, and a lot of love was given away. And you know what? People came to know Jesus as a result of that. And then in 2016, we had some really good global outreach. In fact, you built a church in dormitories in Honduras and in Nicaragua. I think we actually have a picture of that here. I think we ought to give the Lord a great big hand clap for that. And thank you for your obedience and your generosity in helping to make that happen. And then one of my first favorites at Pathway Church was Family Fest. As thousands of people came together, we had all kinds of uh, food that was delicious and activities, car show. Got to do burnouts right in the middle of Moffett Road as the police held up traffic. I said, man, this is, if you can't get to heaven, at least get the mobile because this is living right here. (laughs) 
And then there were floods in Louisiana twice this year. The Pathway Church rallied and sent a team and blessed some people in Denham Springs. And of course, that blessed my heart. My, my in-laws pastor a church there in Louisiana. They were flooded, had six to eight feet of flood. Listen to what happened. I, I know particularly for them, they came through the flood, a lot of inconvenience, but the Lord restored every single stick of, of possession paid for cash, fixed back together because of the church of Jesus Christ all over. And you know what? Not only that, but they have, actually have more money in the church bank than they did before. I think we ought to bless the Lord for the generosity of the church. The youth group had 816, which is their big back-to-school event. It's a two-day event. Over 300 people were present, 50 first-time guests, and 30 young people gave their hearts to Jesus Christ. Amen. And then the youth group, Pastor Chad. How many of you guys appreciate Pastor Chad Pesno? You guys give him a great big hand clap. You know Chad is cool because he can pull off as a dude wearing a white belt. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> Chad rolled up and in a big way had pathway night at the uh, MGM Baker football game and blessed and served and gave stuff away and loved on that, the, that, uh, those schools and... Also served uh, the football team food, which, you know, that's a lot of food for, first of all, teenage boys, period. But then throw some, some big meaty jokers into all that and just bless them and the band. Bless the band, fixed them food, cared for them, served them. They had fusion camp, went to Camp Anderson for a weekend, spiritual renewal, some fun, relationships being established. Twelve people came to know Jesus, and when they came back, we were able to baptize seven of them right here as they went public with their faith in Jesus Christ. I love this one. Right there at Thanksgiving with like two weeks notice, we got our stuff together and uh, we threw down with Buy a Tree, Change a Life and hustled. Pastor Freddie is over here. That guy was a beast during that event. We sold 307 Christmas trees. We had dozens and dozens of volunteers had a lot of fun, and then we raised over $28,000 and gave it away to help children globally and locally. That's awesome. Thank, thank you all for all you did to help raise awareness and to raise that money. In 2016, through Heart for the Kingdom, you gave away $86,961.77. Thank you to the glory of the, of the Lord. And then please, just go ahead and get your imaginary seat belts out and click them. Pull it tight because you're going to need it. You raised over $177,000 to give away to World Missions in 2016. <laughs> and you know, I want to say this so that we don't completely make a mistake in how we compartmentalize this. Everything that you give to the church, technically, is World Missions. We are the mission and we are the cavalry for a lot of people. Families are being worked. Families are being served and cared for. And the gospel is advancing at right here in this place. So everything that you give, I promise you, everything that you give, we labor over it. We work it. We bring it in. We tell it what to do. We make it do what we want it to do. And then we steward it well. And I want to say thank you for your faithfulness in bringing the tithe and the offerings to support the kingdom of God in your church. And I just want to bless you. Thank you so much. In 2017, we had 733 first-time attenders and givers that came through Pathway Church. I think we ought to give the Lord a great big hand for that. And of course, we've had a number of media upgrades this last year. Lights and cameras and projectors and screens. And, and we are getting ready to open the bow and unwrap a new ministry here at the church where we have an online campus where we live stream all of our services and just really push that on out because of your faithfulness and your generosity. And I thank you for that. We ought to give God praise for all he's done in 2016. And I want to say this, you know, there are going to be times where we're going to face difficulties. We've faced difficulties in the past. We're coming through difficulties in the present. And we will come into difficulties in the future. In fact, if you aren't in a problem, you're either on your way in or you're on your way out. That's just how life is. 
That's how life is. You know, there are some people that would like to watch us as we go through difficulties to see what happens when we stumble because there are always people in this world that are just waiting for somebody who professes Jesus to turn their backs on him so that they can cheer. But let me tell you, the upside of difficulty is that there are also people who are watching that when we stumble to see what we do and to see if we will remain faithful to the Lord. And so we praise the Lord for difficulty because it's an opportunity to grab a hold of God's unchanging hand. So we're so thankful for his persistence and his strength in us. And I'm so glad for God's faithfulness and I'm so thankful to you for your faithfulness to him. Now, in 2017, listen, start next week when we get into the For God in Our City message series. I'll unpack a little bit more about what's coming up. We're going to be talking mission. We're going to, we're going to be mobilizing the troops. And we're going to have a blast over the next couple weeks. In fact, we went ahead and we sent out some of these little cards here. You may have even gotten some just getting ready for that here. Um, our Forgotten Our City series. Did you get this already? So it, USPS is very effective, efficient. Because these got dropped on Friday. They were at your house on Saturday, I'm assuming. So excited. That's just some groundwork we're laying for 2017. There's three things that we are going to do in 2017. Number one, I'm going to try and say this without being too cocky or arrogant. In 2017, we are taking over. Taking over. Man, we're taking over. We're not going to tiptoe into this. We're not going to say, Is it okay? are we allowed to be here? No, wherever we go, we own the place. It's just the blessing of the Lord. He's, he's commanded that blessing. Look, wherever your footsteps, you have authority in that place. If, if you're there because you made a mistake, listen, go there with all that you have to the glory of God. Listen, if you're paying a price, if you are in prison and you made a mistake, be there for the glory of God and take over that place. If you are in business, walk with the authority of Jesus Christ and the calling and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We're taking over. That school that you're in, you aren't just an employee. That is the domain that the Lord has given you. That family that you are in, that you have, don't let your kids happen to you. You happen to them. Share the joy of the Lord, the strength of the Lord. Train them up in the way that they should go so that when they're old, they won't depart from it. When we, Pathway Church doesn't need a bunch of child-directed parents. Parents, direct your children. Raise them up to know Jesus and to love Jesus. Man, this Mickey Mouse stuff where we don't really press in on our children. If you're asking, am I too hard on my children and how they study? Man, forget that. Put that out. It get the best out of your kids. They don't have to be better than somebody else. Just be the best that they can possibly be. That whatever they put their hand to it, they do it for the glory of the Lord. Yeah. Pathway Church, we are shaking down this city with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are going to see lives transformed, people and families stitched back together. People are coming to know Jesus, 2017. Pastor, I just don't know, man. You're sounding like a little, I don't know, I, nicer. You need to be nicer. Need, man, I'm just going to what the Lord told us up front. In Genesis 1, 28, he said, the Lord said, and God blessed them, and God said unto them. So I'm just repeating what he said. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So Pathway Church, we've shown up and we are taking charge. This is our place. This is our time. We need to have a good theology of time and place. This is our time. This is our place. We are not living in yesterday and we are not living in tomorrow. It is here. We are here and it is now and we, to the best of our ability, are going to communicate God's grace in this moment, in this place, in this time taking over. We don't exist to float. We don't accept the status quo. We will not leave the community in love. We are going to speak to darkness by being the light of the world. And if it's dark while everyone else is worried about how dark it is, just let the light of Jesus Christ shine because the darker the night, the brighter the light. God is at work. We're going to depopulate hell and populate heaven. And let me say this. 
because for some of us all our life, we've just been trying to get invited to the cool kids table. Forget all that stuff. I mean, it's nice to get invited to great places, right? I mean, it's nice. But while other people are worried about getting invited to the right table, let's just build some tables ourselves. And let's invite the hungry and the lost and the broken and the discouraged. You know, David had these mighty men of valor, but if you go back to their beginning and you read, you find out there was about 120 of them. They were in debt, they were in discontent, and they were distressed. This is who the Lord builds the church on. At Philippi, God got a hold of three people, a Roman jailer, a woman named Lydia who was a purple salesman, a a businesswoman, and a little demon-possessed girl, and that built one of the great churches of the world. In fact, Ephesus was the greatest world city next to Rome. And the church there was explosive. It got so big that the goldsmiths and the silversmiths stopped making idols because nobody was buying. The city had come to know Jesus. And so let's not worry about what we're invited to or what we're not invited to. Let's just start building tables. And here's what I believe is as we invite the prostitute and the tax collector and the down and outer and the up and outer, people that are lonely, people that don't have family, people that don't have a tribe, we invite them to be a part of our tribe. The Holy Spirit gets a hold of us. He puts God's word in our life. We get renovated. The distressed, the discontented, and the disturbed are going to go out in the power of Jesus Christ, inviting other people that they just came from, and we'll have to build some more tables. And then when we're invited to the cool kids' table, if we have time, we'll go. Other than that, we're just going to be about our Father's business. I think that if we go after the people nobody wants, God will give us everything we need. 2nd thing we're going to do is we're going to tell a gospel story with clarity, creativity, and courage. We're going to keep telling the story. The story isn't going to change. The church changes. The church changes. Just get over it. The church changes. It changes. God's word never changes. It never changes. Do you, think, do you really think, do you really think that the church has always been sitting in rows and on pews? And do you think the pastor has always had a coat? No, we didn't have air conditioner. This is just recent. In fact, if it wasn't for air conditioning and mosquito repellent, nobody would live in the South. (laughs) Things change. But God's word never changes. So what we want to do is we want to communicate the unchanging message of Jesus Christ in a way that people can understand it today in this moment, in this place. Let's don't do this. Let's don't look at what some church across the country does and try and do what they do. Let's say, God, help us to be the best church that we can be for Mobile, Alabama in 2017. Lord, we want to be faithful to this, not faithful to somebody else's vision for some other city. We want to be faithful to the vision that you have for our city, for our town, and for our time. Amen. Now, I've been, I've been thinking, I've been thinking about some things that I'd like to do to communicate God's plan for us in this season. And so we want to tell the pathway story fresh and new. So we've been working. I want to unveil something to you. Can I do this right now? Can I? I want to show you something. Let me show you the, uh, just a little new picture of Pathway Church. Do we have that? You guys give it up for the new Pathway Church here. We just want to get this thing out. I got a little something. Got a little something for anybody that would like to grab. I got a shirt. A little Pathway Church shirt. Come on, man. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. I mean, it's about to get worse here. Hook me up with it. Anybody else want one? Come on, man. Which one do you? I got a, oh, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Paper, scissors, rock, right here. Paper, scissors, rock. Oh, they're going to block. No, here. Which one do you want? We got a Pathway Church journal. Let me just say, you bring this in. It's got our logo right here. You can take notes on Sunday. Oh, man, look at that. That's more than a conqueror right there. He did all the work. She got all the blessing. Thank you, David. We're going after God. We're going after this city. 
We got some little goodies out back in the lobby that you can pick up, t-shirts. I'm wearing mine next week, okay? Let's all show up in our pathway apparel, okay? Don't worry, we'll get to the camouflage pathway church hats eventually. (laughs) So thankful. So thankful. I believe in the next couple weeks, as we talk about pathway church being for God in our city, God's going to drive a stake down really good. He's going to remind us. We're all about the great commandment. We're all about the great commission. We're going to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and love our neighbor as ourselves. And as we do that, God is going to transform and he's going to do amazing things here. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to be a serving, giving, and praying church. We're going to talk to the Lord about what he's done for us We're gonna give of ourselves, we're gonna serve. We're gonna have more people serving than we've ever had before. I mean, if we really believe this message and we believe the priesthood of all believers that all of us have a gift, then let's get out there and serve. Let me pause just for a minute and be pastoral to you, with you. Can I do this? Can I, I just need to share this and then we're gonna return thanks. Actually, if the band would go ahead and come on up and we're gonna, we're gonna wrap this up, but I wanna say this to you. Come on, I'm going to need some backup here, okay? I'm going to need it. This is the kind of church we're building. Some scrawny little emaciated church is not going to reach this city. It's going to be a robust church. Strong, mighty, courageous. It needs to be resourced. And God has a plan for how he resources the church. He does this with the tithe. If God has blessed you, then we return thanks to the Lord. And so here's what we do. And I'll just tell you, this is what I do. I'm not asking you to do anything that I don't want, that I don't do myself. I love to tithe. I love to give. I love to tithe and give. And what I found is the more that I bless God, I found out that God has a much bigger shovel than what I have. (laughs) Pathway, if God gives you a hundred, give him ten. And don't do it on the back end, do it on the front end. Close your eyes and honor the Lord with the tithe. And then listen to what scripture says here in Malachi chapter three and verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it, put me to the test. And here is, what I've experienced, what I've experienced is as I've trusted the Lord with the tithe, he said, okay, son, I can trust you a little bit more. Don't ever think, well, when I get enough, then Lord, no, it's the other way around. Let's give it to him. And then we see that God will pour out a blessing on us that we can't contain. It'll overflow our cup. And so here's what I've tried to do with my overflow. I've tried to get around other people that also trust the Lord in the tithe. I just want to be around overflow people because in that kind of overflow arena, you see beautiful things happening. So I'm believing that God's going to do some wonderful things in us. We're going to serve, we're going to give, and we're going to pray. I want you to stand with me. And let me just say, Something that I will always try to do at Pathway Church. If you ask for me to pray for you, I will pray for you right then. And stop right then. After service, I'll be out in the lobby. Right? I go out there, I want to see the church family. If you need prayer, we will stop right there in the lobby. If I'm at Fusakli's and you see me and you need prayer, we will stop and we will pray right there we're going to be a praying church because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much let me say this it's not only about me if you're at walmart and you see a brother or sister they say would you pray for me right there in aisle 13 there's gonna be a blue light special right there and we're gonna get a hotline to the lord and we're gonna talk to the lord we're gonna be a praying church Let's close out this message just like that, returning thanks to the Lord. What I would ask is that you would pray for your church, but you would thank God for all that he's accomplished. Lord, we love you. We bless you. We honor you. We give you thanks. We honor you. Thank you for healing. Thank you for restoration. 
Thank you for lives changed. Thank you for 2016. You have been so good. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.